don't know where I'm going But I do know where I've been Living on the promises Of the songs of yesterday But I made up my mind I ain't wasting no more time here I go again on my own Going down the only road I've ever known Like a drifter I was born to walk alone Hello everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Video Notes from Mr. Flugum's AP Chemistry class. That's right, folks. I said AP Chemistry. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. This is going to be kind of a quick one, but we will be talking about how delta G, Gibbs free energy, relates to equilibrium. So we're just going to introduce this idea and uh, what it kind of means, and then we'll go from, from there on Friday as far as how do we use this information to help us calculate delta G, or K and how delta G and K are related to each other. So let's go ahead and talk and get started, okay? So remember this, right? Delta G is the maximum amount of work that a um, that can be done by a system, right? Maximum work. So it's the energy that gets released that can do work on the environment around it. And this too, right folks? Negative delta G means that the reaction is spontaneous. Okay, so what's new, Mr. Flugum? Well, here's the deal, right? If delta G is zero, that means the system's at equilibrium. That's because then the system can't do work anymore, right? All of the concentration stays steady. So remember, this means that the reaction doesn't stop. It just means that the concentrations stay the same as the reaction kind of proceeds, right? So what that means is this, is that there's a relationship between our equilibrium constant and delta G. All right, so let's take a look at this graph. Let me see if I can explain it to you, all right? We're going to start our reaction with mostly reactant A. And that's, this is where we're starting here, right? At pure A, all right? So the delta, the G, the free energy combined in both species, right? Now remember this equation, right? Our delta G is going to be the products minus the reactants, right? Now in this case, our reaction is going to proceed forward, right? Okay, with the concentration of A kind of decreasing and B increasing, right? And that's because this is a thermodynamically favorable reaction, okay? Until we reach equilibrium. And if you notice here, our G decreases, our change in G ends up being negative. So we have a negative delta G. So what does this mean? Well, when we have a negative delta G, all right, that means we favor the products, right? And our equilibrium constant is going to be greater than one. In fact, in many cases, it's going to be much greater than one. Now, this also means this. That means that the reaction is what's called exergonic. You might be like, what does that mean? Well, what that means is this, that the reaction will release energy. And you might say, well, isn't that exothermic? Excuse me, exothermic, right? And the answer to that is no, not necessarily. Okay, Exothermic means that it could release heat, but there are other forms of energy that could be re released. For example, light can be released or electricity. Or we could just be releasing a gas that does work on the environment around it. Okay, so let's take a look at a different case. So in this case, um, we are going to start with a with basically pure reactant C. Now in this case, this is not a thermodynamically favorable reaction. Okay, so... However, we are going to see that the reaction moves slightly forward so that the amount of pure C decreases and D increases, right? But not very much because it's not thermodynamically favored. 
However, this is an equilibrium reaction. Now in this case, overall, our delta G is going to be positive. Okay, so if we have a positive delta G, that means that our reactants are favored, right? And we have an equilibrium constant that is less than one, right? means that we favor our reactants. This reaction is going to be called endergonic. What, what is that? Well, it's basically the exact opposite of exogonic, right? Okay, so endergonic means this. It means that it takes in energy. And in this case, you may be thinking of something like a endothermic reaction, right? Now, here's the deal. These are equilibrium reactions, right? So, even though the process is non-thermodynamically favored, if we start with only reactants, we are going to produce a small amount of products, okay? When there's none in the system, even though it's not thermodynamically favored, there will be a small production of them, even though there are none in the system, which kind of explains that U-like shape that we find in our in our graph on the last slide. Now here's an example of a non-thermodynamically favored reaction, right? The reaction of, of water, gaseous water, right? Breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen. Not very favorable, right? But it is going to happen in small amounts, okay, in order to reach equilibrium. So to kind of sum it up, you guys, here's the deal. If we have a negative delta G, right, its relationship to K is going to be this. That means our equilibrium constant is going to be greater than 1 because it favors the products, right? If we have a positive delta G, that means it is our equilibrium constant is going to be less than 1 because we are favoring the reactants. We are going to favor not moving forward with the reaction. Well, thanks for tuning in, you guys. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you on Friday in class, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.